Good evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer um, at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. And we have with us a special guest this evening who uh, is well known to the members of, of St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. Um, we have with us Mother Mia McDowell, uh, my good friend and the current vicar of St. Luke's Newberry, uh, former parishioner of St. Andrew's, one of the uh, several great priests that St. Andrews has uh, raised up in recent years. And um, so thank you, Mia. She is in her office in uh, at St. Luke's in Newberry. So thank you for being yes. here, Mia. It um, is my pleasure to be here. Thank you for asking. And I always like to, when I have an opportunity, I always like to, to brag by sh uh, sharing this picture, uh, one of my favorite pictures uh, of me uh, being blessed by the newly ordained Mother Mia McDowell uh, just a few years ago. So um, that's part of the proof of, of the fact that I've been well blessed in my life is that Mother <laughs> Mia did it for, for me right after she had been ordained. So, um, well, thank you, Mia. And let us begin. I uh, turn our hearts and minds to God for prayer and praise for this service of evening prayer. We, um, we are we are observing the feast of Mary Magdalene, so we're using the Eucharistic lectionary for that, and um, we uh, are are doing evening prayer right one. It starts on page sixty one in your prayer book. The bulletin for this has been sent out to the parish uh, in the Wednesday news, uh, so folks. Uh, Hopefully, I've been able to get that. But if not, you can just follow along in your Book of Common Prayer, starting on page 61. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have we erred and strayed from strayed my ways like all my sheep. We have followed too much but the voices, vice, desires, vice, of our own hearts. Our own hearts. We, have we have offended against thy holy laws. laws. We have left we have undone left those things, things which we ought to have done. done. And we have done we have those done. things which we ought not to have, not done. To have done. But thou, but O thou Lord, Lord, have mercy upon us. us. Spare thou those, those who have trust their faults. Restore thou those who have repented. According to thy promises, declared unto the name in Christ, in Christ Jesus, Jesus our Lord. Lord. And, and grant, grant our most merciful Father, Father for his sake, sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, right. and sober, sober life, life to the glory of thy Lord, Lord. My holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and, the Son, and, to, and to the Holy Jesus. Spirit, as it was in the Lord. beginning, is now, and will be forever. Forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Continuing on page 64 with the fossil Aaron. O gracious light, you are the of the ever living, ever -living Father, Father in heaven. O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now, as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the best of light, we sing thy praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thou art worthy at all times to be praised by voices. O Son of God, God, O giver of life, of life and be glorified and through all the world. Psalm appointed is Psalm 42, verses 1 through 7, found on page 643 in your prayer book. Let us read it responsibly by whole verse. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, a thirst for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? 
My tears have been my food day and night, while all day long they say to me, where now is your God? I pour out my soul when I think on these things, how I went with the multitude and led them into the house of God. With the voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who keep holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Judith. Judith prostrated herself, put ashes on her head, and uncovered the sackcloth she was wearing. At the very time when the evening incense was being offered in the house of God in Jerusalem, Judith cried out to the Lord with a loud voice and said, O Lord God, your strength does not depend on numbers, nor your might on the powerful. You are the God of the lowly, helper of the oppressed, upholder of the weak, protector of the forsaken, savior of those without hope. Please, please, God of my Father, God of the heritage of Israel, Lord of heaven and earth, creator of the waters, king of all your creation, hear my prayer. Make my deceitful words bring wound and bruise on those who have planned cruel things against your covenant and against your sacred house and against Mount Zion and against the house your children possess. Let your whole nation and every tribe know and understand that you are God, the God of all power and might, that there is no other who protects the people of Israel but you alone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Continuing now with the Magnificat, it's found on page 65. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my and spirit, spirit hath rejoiced in God, God my Savior. Savior. For he hath regarded he hath the lowliness of his handmaiden. handmaiden. For behold, from oh, henceforth all generations all generation shall, shall call him blessed. blessed. For he that is mighty, is mighty hath magnified, magnified me. me. And holy, and holy is his name. name. And his and mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. All generations. He hath showed and strength with his arm. He hath scattered, scattered the proud, proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the so mighty, mighty in their seat. And hath exalted and the humble in me. He hath filled he hath the hungry, filled hungry with hungry good things. Good and the rich he, he hath sent away empty. He, he remembering, remembering his, his mercy hath hope in his servant, his servant Israel, Israel. and as he, he promised, as he promised to our forefathers, forefathers Abraham, Abraham and his seed and forever. Glory to the Glory Father, to Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Will be forever. Amen. Amen. The second reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. Mary Magdalene stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. 
she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. And I go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascended to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mary Magdalene, in much the same way as we talk about Judas, in contemporary culture gets a bad rap in my in my opinion he's been described as a prostitute and been associated with one being possessed of demons in the scripture and in some way i hope to redeem her a little bit really by the own scriptures that describe her as one of those who were first who first witnessed the risen lord for me coming to the Episcopal Church and knowing that we have feast days when we commemorate those in the scripture who, um, who are very examples for us in the faith and not hearing the background about Mary Magdalene, I came to understand her more the way the scriptures describe her as one who wept and one who is deeply deeply disturbed that her Lord is taken away. Throughout this gospel passage in John about Mary Magdalene, I always love to read it because I feel her emotions. If you can imagine them going to the tomb and they go there to do what Jewish women do to, to rub the body with more spices and to care for it, because remember they couldn't go on Saturday, they'd come the next day because they were at rest on the Sabbath. And so they do what traditional women do. And upon entering that tomb, he's not there. I can liken that to walking into any situation and expecting to find a good friend or a person whom you love dearly present. And you walk into that situation or to someone's home and they are not present. I feel Mary Magdalene's heart sink. And then this person who she thinks is a gardener, Jesus disguises himself so he, she doesn't recognize him. Um, I always wonder why our Lord did that, you know, maybe to increase her faith or just to, you know, say, hey, she doesn't know it's me. I'm just gonna, you know, not let her know until I decide I'm gonna show her, show her myself. And this is where her heart comes out. And she says, she said to him, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. Then he said, woman, and imagine her rejoicing that, oh, my teacher, Rabuni, is not even just teacher, my, my favorite, my blessed teacher is among her. Her joy is probably complete, but she's probably a little bit confused. But her confusion is overshadowed by the joy that he's here. He's not going away. Here he is right here and probably is holding on to him and touching him. And she says, don't hold on to me. I have to go to my father. Because Jesus has to complete that work that he was sent to do. What's interesting to me also is that he said, go and tell my brothers that you've seen me. And I had to have known, he's like, they're not going to believe her because she's a woman. The women don't know what they're talking about. And we know what happens in the other parts of the gospel. They don't believe her because she's a woman and they have to go for themselves. He said, well, go see. If you don't believe, go, go see. And we have the image of them running to see, and of course, one reaching to the tomb and the other. And then they believe. Mary Magdalene, in the Greek Orthodox tradition, Father Gary, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'm truly being stated, to hold, hold, hold her as an apostle, right? They don't let women preside at the altar in the Greek Orthodox tradition, but they hold Mary Magdalene in such high esteem that she's an apostle because what? She was told to go and tell. And if we know anything about apostleship, about apostolates, 
they're the sit ones. The people are sent to go and tell and go and do. And so Mary Magdalene is upheld as an apostle in that light. Um, and that she was obedient. She went and she told. She the wasn't apostle responsible. To the apostles. It's, it, right. It's she, the apostle she, she, to the apostles. she wasn't. She wasn't to be concerned about whether they believed it or not. She did what she was supposed to do. She was told to go and tell, and she did that. So in our own apostolate as Christians, our own sense of mission that God may draw us to certain areas of where his touch is needed, you know, we can use Mary Magdalene as an example. She didn't question it. She did it, and she left the results of the Holy Spirit with those who she gave the message to. So Mary Magdalene has a beautiful place in my faith, particularly, not because of all the other things I've said about her scholarly or um, outside of scripture, but more for what John says about her, her faith, her deep devotion to our Lord, that she was visibly upset that he was not lying there. So Mary Magdalene, apostle, first apostle in, in, the, in the church, the sent one, May she be an example to all of us to simply obey and to go and to tell and to do in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Not Demetrius is on page 66. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in the heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, is the kingdom the power, the power, and the, power and the glory forever. And ever. Amen. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us under in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son restored Mary Magdalene to health of body and mind, 
and called her to be a witness of his resurrection. Mercifully grant that by thy grace we may be healed of all our infirmities and know thee in the power of his endless life, who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, who art the life of all who live, the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, and the repose of the dead, we thank thee for the timely blessings of the day and humbly beseech thy merciful protection all the night. Bring us, we pray thee, in safety to the morning hours through him who died for us and rose again, thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give thine angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for thy love's sake. Amen. At this time, I'd like to offer prayers on behalf of all those who have been commended to the prayers of this parish, especially Agnes, Barbara, Betty, Bill, Bob, Buddy, Carol Ann, Chris, Chuck, Corinne, David, Diane, Nick, Eddie, Ina, Ethan, Ginger, Hamilton, Anna, Helen, Jane, Jody, John Frank, Ken, Leanne, Margaret Lee, Mary, Nancy, Mel, Ray, Sandy, Scott, Wade, Wheezy, and Winnie, as well as those whom you are invited to name now, either silently or aloud. I pray for Margaret Brackett, for Dale Brigman, Eddie Anderson, Pray for J.J. Brookshire, Anna Kate, and Bianca and Carl. We also pray for the repose of the souls of those who have died in faith and fear, especially Frankie Prophet, mother of Kelly Prophet, and Sissy Cannon Goodale, sister of Father Chan Charles Cannon and for those whom you are now invited to name, either silently or loud. We pray for the repose and the memory and thanks to the life for Shelly and yet Pitts on the anniversary of her passing. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. Continuing now with the great thanksgiving on page 71. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving and kindness to us and to all men. men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings, all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord, our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, grace and the hope of glory. Lord, hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that new of all of thy all mercies, mercies, that our, hurt, our hearts, hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy forth praise, thy praise not, only not only with our lips, but in, but our, in lives, our lives, by giving by up ourselves, ourselves to thy service. service. And by walking and before, before thee in holiness, holiness and righteousness, and righteousness all, all our days, through, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord, our Lord to whom to whom we we and, and the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost be all yeah. honor and glory, honor and glory for the world without end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Father Gary, for the invitation, and may God be with all the people at St. Andrews.